welcome to this Photoshop CS4 tutorial where we're looking at the new mask feature. I've got my mask panel as well as my layers panel on the screen and you can see I've got two layers, a little sky in the background and a butterfly in the foreground layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask away the white around the butterfly. There's many different ways that you could approach and do this in Photoshop and many commands that I know that I could use. But the new mask panel is really designed to be able to make masking or layer masking predominantly easier. It has two basic features, which is to do a pixel based mask, i.e. a photographic mask, and to also do a vector based mask. And we're going to have a quick look at both of these. I'm going to select my butterfly layer and then I'm going to click this button here that allows me to add a pixel mask. We have options over the density as well as the feathering of the mask. But the first thing I need to do is to actually build the mask. You can see it's given me a reveal all white mask against this layer. One nice feature of this is that if you are working on a locked background layer, it always had to be that you had to unlock the layer first in Photoshop before you could add a mask using the add layer mask icon at the bottom of the screen. But this new feature means that if you are working on a locked layer, you just click this icon and it will automatically unlock the layer and add a mask. First thing I'm going to do then is go to the color range command. So similar as it has been under the select menu for many years, if I go into color range, it then gives me the ability to build a mask based upon the available colors in the background. Now I've cheated slightly for the ease of this presentation. So I've gone for a multicolored butterfly, but on a predominantly white background. What I then need to do is I then need to set the way that my selection preview works. I could choose to have no selection preview, so I could see through it to the hole that it's punching through to the background, but I normally prefer to have it set to grayscale, so areas that are not included in the mask are represented by shades of grey. With my eyedropper I'm going to click to select the background, and you can see that by changing the fuzziness value here, as it works out how much or how little to select, the more I do this the more it's then deeming to select inside the butterfly. So by just pulling the fuzziness value backwards until I get it completely filled in, something like that. So that's looking like a good selection. If I then click OK, it now builds the mask for me. And as I usually end up doing is I've invariably got my mask the wrong way round. So they've handily added this little invert option. So clicking this allows me to invert my mask the other way around. So there we go, a simple built mask. However, I've still got some fringe white pixels around the edge here. We could use a blur technique on this mask, but alternatively, we can go and use the new mask edge command. This takes us into the refine edges system, which was new in CS3 version of Photoshop. They've called it refine mask here, but really it's the same thing. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to see the quality of that little white edge disappearing. And this is where, by changing these icons at the bottom, you can choose to take different views of what you're working with. You'll notice that the background sky layer has disappeared currently. One of my preferences is to go to this view because it allows me to see it live against the background object. But notice it's got a selection on it. So if you do Apple H on the Mac or Control H on Windows, it then just hides that selection. I'm going to set radius contrast and the smooth value to zero. But by playing with the feather value, which softens the edges as you can see in the little graphic of the feather in the bottom right hand corner there, and then by contracting the selection, you can see the white just appearing around the edges of the butterfly. Increasing or decreasing the feather size, I can choose to remove more or less of that little white selection. Now this is a good technique, this new mask panel. Very good for building quick creative views of images. I'm not certain it's going to work at high resolution artwork mode. I would be tempted to use other techniques like building a blur mask and maybe zooming in and doing some more pixel based editing. I'm going to click OK and there we go. So there's my butterfly on a simple background. Now with vector masks, I'm just going to switch to Illustrator. And here's a simple little outline that I've drawn. It's supposed to represent a sun. I'm going to copy that object just using the normal copy command and then switch back again to Photoshop and then do the normal paste command. And as it's spotted that I'm bringing in something from a vector based program, it's asking me how I want to paste this and I'm going to go for a shape layer. So this object has now been pasted as a vectored layer and you can see that reflected over here. There's a difference in the icon. 
and at the same time it's telling me up here that it's already put a vectored mask onto this object and this mask is currently revealing everything that includes this little shape. I'm just going to move this shape over into an alternative position, something like this, and this is really the main reason for showing you this. The new masks panel allows us to do feathering on vectored shape layers. So you can see I can now produce something of a soft edge on a vectored shape. Finally, just switch the layers so that I can put that behind something like that, click off there, and there we go. That's a good introduction to the new masks panel, a really nice feature and a great way to be able to control and quickly play with masks in Photoshop CS4.